dying for all of your sins. And some people get confused about this. There's a second judgment that we see in Revelation chapter 20, which is the great white throne judgment, which happens after the millennial reign of Christ, when heaven and earth is passed away, and then everybody's just standing before this great, great white throne, and, and death and hell deliver up the dead which are in it, and the, and the dead are standing before God, and then they are judged according to their works out of the law. Out of the books of God, out of, out of God's law, they're going to be judged according to their works in that sense because they don't have Christ, and then they're going to pay for all their sins in eternity in the lake of fire. So that is a different judgment. It is of their works, but that is all of their breaking of the commandments, whereas the judgment seat of Christ is not about your sin. It's about what did you do for the cause of Christ. It's, it's the positive side of things versus the negative side of things. Because the negative side of things for us, hey, Christ has, has made that balance. He's, he's paid that in full. So we don't have that debt to owe. But now he's asking, well, what did you do? And then he's going to give rewards for that. Now, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, let's look at verse number 13. The Bible says, we having the same spirit of faith, According as it is written, I believed and therefore have I spoken. We also believe and therefore speak. Knowing that he which raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise up us also by Jesus and shall present us with you. For all things are for your sakes that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many redound to the glory of God. Now, He's talking about the resurrection, talking about us being raised up, right? Because this is ap right after his first resurrection is when this judgment seat of Christ is going to take place. And he's saying, hey, we're going to be raised up with you, and you're going to be present with us. We're going to be there together because you're saved, we're saved, we're going to be part of this first resurrection, and all things are for your sakes, Remember I mentioned that before. Pick up on these clues as we keep going, how much it's about other people. For which cause, verse 16, we faint not. But though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. So, the affliction that you may suffer in this lifetime, in this flesh, in this body here on earth, he says, look, first of all, it's but for a moment. Our life is like a vapor which appeareth for a short time and then vanisheth away, the Bible says. It's, it's a very quick, and especially if you're going to compare that to all of eternity. <laughs> right? We are here for a very short period of time. Right. Decades is... is tiny, it's insignificant on the grand timeline of eternity. It is, it is a blink of the eye. So if we suffer, if we are afflicted in this life, well, this is how we will be judged, and whatever we receive from God, we will have for eternity. So, so weigh that in your mind Am I willing to suffer? Am I willing to be exhausted? Am I willing to be tired? Am I willing to be afflicted? Am I willing to go through any suffering for the cause of Christ? But in knowing this is very temporary, this is very short. And if I know that if I can just keep faithful and just do what's right and just, and just push through to the end, God has a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. There is a glory, a brightness, a shining that God gives to those that serve him. And some glory is greater than others. We see that. There's other references in scripture about that. But we're seeing here, look, if you can just make it through that light affliction, God has so much more abundant glory and honor for you.